All right. So um, today we're talking about circles um, in the general conic form. Okay. So for the ones who did their 11.1, great. For the ones who have not, then it'll be like a little quick run through of 11.1. 11.1, however, should have been like a review of geometry and a review of algebra two concepts. Um, as you're as you're going through like, oh, I've seen this. Oh, I've heard this. It shouldn't have felt like foreign territory. Okay. Um, we're going to do a quick little factory review check. So uh, when it says to expand the binomial, what does it mean I want you to do here? Foil. I want to foil, right? And that's because when I have x plus three squared, that means that there are two of them, right? And then after I foil, I'll end up with x squared plus six x plus nine. Agreed? Yes. All right. If it says factor the trinomial, what should I think about when I'm factoring the trinomial? What multiplies to get that and what adds to get that. Perfect. What multiplies to give me 36, but adds to give me negative 12. What does that? Six and six. What kind of six and six? Negative six and negative six. A negative six and a negative six, which condenses down to being X minus six mm -hmm. squared, right? These two examples here are what we call perfect square trinomials. Okay, do we remember that? These are our perfect squares, meaning that if I had a square, pretend that this is like the best square you've ever seen in your life. Uh, <laughs> it's a square because all the sides are equal, right? Yes? Okay. So what do we notice about this? Well, there was a pattern that we that we stated. This is actually x squared plus bx plus c. Um, and when you're looking at it, your c is going to always be half of your b divided by half of your b squared. So if you go back and look at our x squared minus 12x plus 36, what's half of negative 12? What is negative six squared? 36. 36. What's half of six? Three. What's three squared? Nine. Nine, right? That's that's what the magic number is. That's our C, right? <laughs> okay. Now, this is important because we're going to need to recall this skill that we've done before. Okay. So just checking to make sure we got this. It's supposed to say we do, but it says I do. 16. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> So, really quick, out loud, here we go. What is my missing number? 16. Why is it 16? 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Thank you. So, this would be 16. Yes? Mm -hmm. And like Andrew said, it's because 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Can you complete the square? Yes. Yes. Totally doable, right? Yeah? Honestly? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Here we go. So when we're trying to complete the square, it's a way of us being able to solve equations a little faster. Okay. Um, so the first thing you want to do is move the constant to the other side. So remember, your constant is your number without a variable. So we're going to move our constant. Well, how do I move a positive 8? Subtract it. Subtract it. So we're going to have x squared, 6x, and negative 8. Yes? Yes. Wow, wow. Because this isn't a perfect square, and we're trying to make it into a perfect square. Okay, okay? so the ne next thing we're going to do is add, add the new number to both sides. So we got to find our new number. So x squared is going to be x squared. 6x is still x. But I'm going to ask myself, for my new c, c equals what? B divided, b divided by 2 squared. squared. And what is our b? Negative 8. What's our b? Oh, 6. six. Six. So we have six divided by two squared. So what is our new C? Nine. Nine. Wait, why, why is it taking? Because we moved the eight and we found a new C. So we're finding a new C to replace it. We moved eight because we're trying to make it into a perfect square. We're trying to complete the square. Okay. All right. Now, on the other side, your negative eight is still there. But notice how I added nine here what you do to one side you have to do to the 
other or it will not stay balanced. So if I added nine to the left, I also have to add nine to the right. Hmm. So that's gonna leave me with now, this is a perfect square. This can be written as X plus three squared. And negative eight plus nine is what? One. One. Okay, this is useful when solving. So I can solve now for X fairly, fairly easily. So if I wanna solve for X, I have parentheses X plus three squared equals one. What do I need to do to get X by itself? Take the square root, perfect. And when you take the square root of something, Becomes a positive and a negative. A positive and a negative. What, what's left for me to get x by itself? Subtract three. Subtract three. So I'm left with x equals negative three plus or minus one. So what are my two solutions? Um, negative, negative three four. plus one. Negative three plus one, which is? Negative, uh, negative two. And then negative three minus one is? Negative four. There you go. So you completed the square and you were able to solve. Yeah? Okay, well, this was easy because our leading coefficient was Casper the friendly one, right? What happens when it's not Casper the friendly one? It adds one more step, okay? So, I need a sick break. Y'all are being dramatic. Here we go. Step one is still to do what? Move the constant. So we need to move the negative 16. When I move negative 16, it's going to become a positive 16. positive 16. Step two is to divide everything by the coefficient of x squared. What's my coefficient? Four. Four, four. right? So I'm going to divide everything by four. Divide u by four, divide u by four, divide u by four. And what am I left with? x squared plus 2x equals four. Still with me? Yeah. Okay, step three is now we're going to add our new number. So we need to find our new C. So we have X squared plus 2X. What does our new C equal? One. Why? Because C divided by 2 is 1. There you go. And 2 1 squared is 1. There you go. It's just 1. So on your left, on your right hand side, we already have four, but what do I have to make sure I add? So it stays equal, the one. So then when I factor this, it comes down to being X plus one squared. Why is it X plus one squared? Because one times one is one and one plus one is two. And four plus one is five. So am I able to solve this? Yes. Yes. So we have X plus one squared equals five. What are the steps I have to take to get X by itself? Square root. Square root. So we're left with X plus one equals plus or minus the square root of five. And then what's left for me to do to get X subtract by itself? One. Subtract the one. So we get X equals negative one plus or minus the square root of five. Can we go any further there? Not really. No, because five is not a perfect square. So that would be your answer. All right. I'll put one forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Good. Good? All right. Now, this was an algebra two quick review. Now we're going to lead it into the oh. pre oh, wow. um, Don't do it. Don't do okay? it. Okay. So um, pre-cal, every conic section may be written in the form of ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy equals e, okay? Uh, this is a conic, a conic function, okay? And as you can see here, it's an intermingling of x's and y's. Do we see that? Uh -huh. Okay, unfortunate. unfortunate. So this is the conic standard form, all right? So when you have a conic, which are our circles, our, this is a conic cone right here. The conic cone will break down like all the different things that literally can come from slicing a cone. Hence why it's called a conic, okay? Um, so the first thing you can slice off is a 
What shape does that make? Oh. What is the a circle? circle. Oh. So that's why the first thing we talked about was a circle. The next thing that could be sliced off. I don't know. The next thing that can be chopped off is what you did your notes on on 11.1, .1, a parabola. Mm -hmm. And your parabola can be either vertical or horizontal. horizontal. Okay. The next two that we're going to learn are called ellipse. This is an ellipse. It's a little bit of a ovalish shape circle, a little skinny at the top, a little wide at the bottom, you know. Um, this is called an ellipse. And then our last one that we'll learn, that we'll learn, learn is a, won't come off, it's coming. That's the sound, <laughs> It's coming. Yeah. It's going to come. It's a hyperbole. Perfect. Okay. That looks a lot like a parabola. It almost, but it's a little longer. Okay. And has a little different properties. And that's why these are all called conics, because they're all sliced from a oh. cone. Okay, on what's that day called? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow, happen. you're going to make your own comic. Oh. Uh, why? Why not? That could be our final grade. Bye. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Now, a circle is the conic that where your A and your B are equal. So A equals B. They have to equal each other. All right. That's because it's equal distance from everything, right? That's what a radius is, right? It's the equal distance. Now, this is the standard form for a circle. We reviewed this in 11.1, .1, but this is our standard form for a circle, okay? In standard form, we know that we can find our center of our circle. It's always going to be your H and your K. And we can identify our radius of our circle, and that's just going to be our R. But the goal is we have to get to this in order to state what's the center and what's your radius. Okay. Key thing to remember here is that not only is your X a liar, but so is your Y. So it's always the opposite of what you think. If it says minus H, then H is positive. If it says minus K, then K is positive. Okay. All right. Let's do this. We got this. So here we have x squared plus y squared plus 10x minus 4y plus 20 equals zero, okay? So there are five steps that we follow, okay? The first two you kind of do together. So step one is you're going to move your constant. Step two is you're going to group, group x's and y's. Okay, so we're going to move our constant and group our x and y's. Remember, this is our constant. How, do, how are we going to move a positive 20? Okay. Subtract it. So I'm going to group x squared plus 10x plus y squared minus 4y equals negative 20. Oh, you're grouping. You're grouping. You're going to group your x's and your y's. Okay, how do we feel about steps one and two? Doable. Doable. All right, step three is you're going to complete the square. So you're going to complete the square. And by completing the square, we're finding our new C's, right? So what is what are our new C's? So here I have X squared plus 10X what is it C? 25. 25. Good job. Plus y squared minus 4y plus what is its new C? 4. 4. Good job. Equals negative 20. And what I did to the left, I have to also do to the right. So I have to add 25 and add four. Yes? Yeah. All right, step four, we're gonna factor and simplify. So we're gonna factor and simplify. So 
So when we factor this, it becomes x plus 5 squared because 5 times 5 is 25. 5 plus 5 is 10. Yes? Plus y minus 2 squared. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Equals negative 20 plus 25 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. And then step five is fairly easy. All you're doing is um, writing your constant in exponential. So basically, yeah. You're going to take the, for lack of better, take the square root of your constant. So this would be written as 3 squared. All right, so from here, you now can tell me the center. What is the center? Uh, negative five, two. Perfect. And what is my radius? What's the radius? Three. Three. Damn. So you found your standard form, you found your center, and your okay. radius. Three squared and then negative five, two, and three. It would be this. This is your function. The and then this would be analyzing it. Oh. Yeah. Was it terrible? Yes. No. You I, have me in so I like kind of but I just don't. I can't do it by myself. Yes, you can. Not today. I'd get really loud if I could do this. Okay. Well, well we don't like I could start off and I get like one. You just gotta two, follow the five steps. I get one through three. You just keep one step, move constant. No. <laughs> I got that. Okay. Um, the only thing that would change is that notice here. What? What do you see here? Divide everything by three. Divide everything by three. Why do you divide everything by three? Because your x and y's need to be one. Okay. So we would divide everything by three and then repeat those same steps. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All you have to do. Okay. All right. So guess what you're due now will be for tomorrow. Six. And seven. Oh, what? Okay. Okay. You're due now tomorrow will be six and seven. You're great and awesome. Thank you.